Hey everyone, welcome to Data Eng Uncomplicated. I'm Adriano and today we're going to be talking about how to join your data with no code using the Feature Joiner Transformer in FME based on a common attribute. So the Feature Joiner Transformer is relatively new and it was introduced in FME in 2018. It allows you to join your data for all types of cardinality between your attributes. So if you have a one-to-one -one relationship, a one-to-many, or many-to-one, or even many-to-many, -many, it will be able to handle it. Uh, if It is actually better performance compared to the Feature Merger Transformer, and it uses the same type of logic to join your data as it does in SQL. So you have your inner join, outer join, and full outer join. So it, it uses the same concept. So when is it best to use the Feature Joiner Transformer? It is best to use when your join is simple based on common attribute fields. If your join is more complex, such as constructing keys or using expressions, then you should consider using the feature merger transformer. It also does not perform some advanced list building or geometry handling operations that the feature merger uh, allows you to do. Um, it is also good or best to use this transformer when you're expecting uh, one to many cardinality or many to many or many to one cardinality. All right, so for this example, I'm going to be joining data from geonames.org. Uh, if you're not familiar with geonames, it's an open source database containing all geographic places around the world. So I've gone to the data dump page. I've grabbed the cities 5000 file, which contains all cities around the world mo with more than 5000 people. And I'm going to be joining that to the alternate name table, which contains all the alternate names for every place around the world. So I've already loaded that into my FME workbench and we have our cities file over here um, which you can see all the attributes and the alternate names uh, in English. So I've done some already pre-processing to make it more workable. I've filtered out all the places to just contain names that are in English. So I had to add an attribute manager to my cities file because the columns didn't actually ha were not labeled. So I read through the GeoNames documentation to pull out what the attribute column should be and have labeled that. So now in order to use the feature joiner, I'm going to be connecting my left port on it with the cities uh, 5000 file and the alternate name to the uh, right port. So before the join can happen, we still have to configure some parameters. As you notice, the wheel is still red on the transformer. So it's asking now, what are the attribute names that we're going to use for the join to take place? Now, I'm familiar with the data, and I know it's the geoname ID column. So on my left port, I just set that. And on my right port, it's going to be geoname ID as well. Now, if your data is more complicated, maybe you, it needs multiple attributes for the join to happen. So it allows you, you can add as many as you need. Um, so I'm just going to remove those, but you could then add in, you know, ad additional ones for that join to, to take place. All right, so now the join mode. So this is where it becomes familiar if you're used to using SQL. Um, we have an inner join, left join, and full join. So what, uh, I'm going to run that with an inner join. Now what's happening is an inner join is actually going to return all the records that match based on that key that I joined. So where all the geoname IDs match up, it's going to return those values. So now what we notice is 17,219 have come through the join and 33, over 33,000 through the left and 629,000 through the right. So now let's see what happens if I do that with the uh, left join. And what left join is doing is going to return all the records through the join, the, the join port from the left side, and only the ones that have matched that ID through the uh, from the right table. All right, now we have 50,801 that have come through. So what you notice here is we only have 49,697 records coming through the left join, but we actually have more that are coming through. So we have more. Uh, actually more alternate names that are joining to our city file than we do have city uh, city locations. So what this means is that this is actually a one-to-many join. So I've actually learned something about my data through doing a join this way. All right, and finally, let's give it a try with full join and see what happens. 
Now, full join, it's going to return all the records, if they join or not, through that join port. So we're going to end up with 680,000. So if we take a look, the joins are coming through as well as the records that didn't join. So you notice that at the bottom of it, we have uh, just the alternate name columns are here, and then the, the city attributes are null because they, there was no GeoName ID for that to join to happen. So uh, one trick we can use now, if I you know wanted to use the feature joiner to, and I was trying to understand why wasn't this a one-to-one -one join, I can actually use the matcher transformer to find out or investigate which attributes didn't match up. So I'm just going to set that to be my geoname ID. Give that a run. And now it's going to return all the matched attributes that had the same geoname ID. So these are the duplicates. So if you look at the, under, the matched ID column, which I was which set as the uh, matched ID attribute as the default there, now I can actually go through and uh, do some comparisons. Maybe I want to select a specific alternate name so I could you know, filter that down even more. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention actually is we also have the attribute conflict resolution. So if there was a, a conflict between other attributes, you can select you know, which, which uh, table do you want to use. Do you want to use the left port or the right port? And same with ge geometry handling. So if this is a spatial data set that you're joining together, you can decide to use left, right, or aggregate left and right, which would enforce unique names. So I hope you've learned how to use the feature joiner in FME. Thanks for watching and please like this video if you've learned something. See you next time.